How many five stars will Texas land in the month of August? The Longhorns are currently sitting at number 15 overall in the on three industry rankings. But if August goes the right way, the Horns could find themselves inside the top five. Well, we we got to see how this goes. And that's why I got Justin Wells on this video from Inside Texas. We're going to break down the five star commitments happening this month see which ones could go in Texas's favor but before we get going guys hit subscribe to the on three recruit channel the best recruiting channel on all of YouTube we need Texas fans to jump on board go ahead and hit subscribe for me please all right let's bring on Justin Wells from inside Texas five-star targets committing this month I want to start with Jonah Williams now he's going to commit at the end of the month I think the date is the 25th uh, but Jonah Williams was on campus this weekend so what are you hearing from sources coming out of this most recent visit yeah, with Jonah Williams, um, you know, even as long as a week ago, I, I think Texas coaches really didn't know what their footing was with Jonah. Uh, you know, he's kind of keeping everybody on their toes for the most part, but he, he absolutely loved his trip on Thursday. You know, his parents reached out to the staff last week and said, hey, they'd like to come see him again. And and like he told our, our Steve Wilfong, he's, you know, Texas has kind of been a sleeper to him. Uh, if anybody knows his history, his his brother, Nick Williams, actually lives there, was once committed uh, to Texas before he was drafted by the uh, uh, Texas Rangers in the second round of the MLB draft. And so, you know, he he's making his rounds because he's ready to, to, to lock in and make a decision. Yeah, Josh, that, that's his big thing right now. He wanted to see Texas one more time because he didn't take an official visit there in June like he did with the other schools. But at each point, it felt like Oklahoma – USC, LSU, Oregon, and Texas A&M have had some sort of lead in this recruitment. And the one school that I never think it really has is Texas. And now I kind of am thinking that they could be a sleeper in this. Um, the baseball aspect is really big, yeah. uh, especially hiring Jim, Jim Schlossnagel from A&M. I think that's going to help. But ultimately, this is a football decision. I think this is a, an NIL recruitment where uh, you're going to have to put up your best at the end of the day, uh, to, you know, put up your best, best offer, best bid, best all that, all that stuff, because Jonah is an elite, elite athlete who can throw 95 on the bump left handed. But even better, he's rangy and he tracks and smacks at safety. Uh, Texas is in the mix. Uh, but, uh, you know, right now, man, it, 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 it to get a read on him, you know, I think Texas A&M has a good little look there. LSU and Oregon are hanging around as well. But Hey, Texas, Texas moved the needle a little bit with that unofficial on Thursday, and now he's going to lock it down for the next month before he makes that decision in late August. Right. So we'll have a lot of time to speculate where Jonah Williams will go. My my gut tells me he stays somewhere closer to home. I, I think he's got some great options when it comes to football and baseball right there close to him. So we'll see what happens with Jonah Williams. He's at the end of the month. Now, Jamie French is also going to be at the end of the month, and he has been trending to Texas for a while. Uh, we know Texas sits in a good spot. So if you're talking to Texas fans, who, what team or teams would you watch out for when it comes to Jamie French over the course of the next three, four weeks? Miami, Miami, and Miami. That's the, that's the school to watch. I think Chad Simmons came on the show and told you a couple weeks ago that Miami was kind of a dark horse and that they were kind of hanging around a lot. Well, Miami is still the school I think Texas fans need to, to be leery of. I talked to Jamie late last week and before he, he took a few visits. And, you know, Texas has been great. Like, the, the, their message is, is the same. Come home. Come be a part of this. Um, but Miami's the main school that that's that that's that's putting on the press right now. Listen, mm -hmm. at some points, LSU, Ohio State, uh, a lot of those different guys were in the mix. But I think it's going to come down to to the Longhorns and the Hurricanes, the in-state Miami school. Listen, they are coming at Jamie big time. But I really do feel like Texas has laid a strong enough foundation to where they're still going to be the leader uh, going into his decision coming in the next few weeks. Uh, he's a big one. He is a big one. LSU is still trying. Ohio State is still trying. But if I'm a Texas fan, watch out for the U. All right. Now, Khalid Lockett, who will be the first five-star wide receiver off the board, he's going to make his decision August 7th. So from Saxe, Texas, Khalid Lockett is down to a couple schools. Texas is right there in the thick of it. What do you think for his decision? Is we're just about, oh, just over a week out. Yeah, right now, <laughs> the thing with Kalik is he's he's keeping it pretty close to the vest as well. 
I think he's been ready for this decision for months. I think after the, the June official visits, he knew where he was going to go. He just wanted to make sure. Him and his family have been very thorough in this process. You know, like I said, I, I love talking about Khalid because he went from no stars to four stars to five stars, from no offers to four, almost 40 offers. <laughs> you love to watch his climb because he has progressively gotten better every season at Saxe. I really like where Texas stands here, especially with DeCorey and Moore headed to, to Oregon. I think – I don't know if that would have been a holdup for Texas and, Lock, and Lockett, but I definitely think it clears the runway uh, for him for him and Jamie to come in as a 1A, 1B type kind of like duo. They talk to each other a lot. Chris Jackson talks to those guys with K.J. Lacey a lot. And so I, I, right now I love where Texas and Lockett are standing. Mm, all right. I like where your confidence lies, and I'm sure Texas fans do as well. Now, how about Michael Terry the third, the number one athlete in America? Uh, just came off of taking a couple trips. Actually, he's still on a couple of visits right now as we speak on Monday morning. So Michael Terry the yeah. third gonna make his decision at the end of August. Where do you think Texas sits right now? You know, if I feel like if Texas would have pushed the right way in January, this recruitment would be over. But it felt like they kind of drug it out a little bit. I know Terry was adamant about wanting to play on one side of the ball, the offensive side. Fast forward to, to June, they bring him in on official, and they basically lay it out. Look, they want him. They've got to have him. Yeah. They want him as an athlete, potentially tied in H-back, maybe some receiver role. Uh, it, it, and if that doesn't work, maybe moving over to the defensive side. Either way, A.J. Milwee and Sark really laid the foundation for this recruitment. But this is, this is going to go down to relationships, Josh, because this kid was offered in eighth grade by the two top schools he's talking to right now. When Will Stein was the offensive coordinator at UTSA, he offered Terry. He's the OC at Oregon now. Tashar Choice at Georgia Tech, he's the running back coach at Texas now. Both those guys built a really good bond with, with Terry and his family. Uh, if he decides to stay close to home, it, it's going to be Texas. But Oregon – they, they've got his attention. Mm -hmm. You know, in this cycle, the, the Ducks have, have found a way to maneuver themselves into a handful of these Texas recruitments. And like I said, Will Stein's had this relationship for a long time. I think it's 50-50 Texas-Oregon right now. I think it's an, an even-up battle. If he decides to stay home, it'll be the Horns. And, and I think you could probably give them the edge. But Oregon got that last trip, and you got to be leery of that. And let's not sleep on Nebraska. He's going to be there today, I believe, and tomorrow. Yep. Hey, they've got a shot at it as well. But ultimately, I think this is going to be a Texas-Oregon battle. Uh, we'll see how this goes uh, at the end of August. Yeah, and, uh, you know, Nebraska making a big play for David Sanders down the stretch. Maybe Michael Terry as yeah. well. So, like you said, don't sleep on Nebraska there either. Now, we're talking about five five-stars that are all making their decision in August. All of them are very important, but maybe the most important of them all is going to be offensive tackle Michael Fasusi. He's going to make his decision in about two weeks. It's going to be August 17th, and that is a big one. How do you think Texas fares in this one as we're just over two weeks out? Woo! This is the big one, Josh. This is not just for Texas fans, but for the Texas staff. Mm -hmm. You know, Sark knows how important this guy is. And Kyle Flood and those guys. Listen, Michael Fasusi is, 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 is number one for a reason. Franchise left tackle, six four and a half, two hundred ninety five 295 pounds of, of absolute beautiful franchise left tackle. Um, Oklahoma's feeling really confident right now. They Bill Biedenball has probably built the best relationship with him staff wise when it comes to coaches. And and, and Fasuzzi will tell you that. Uh, there's a handful of other schools that I think are still kind of in and out of it, but this to me is a Texas OU battle. I think AM is out of it now. This is going to be a Red River shootout. Listen, Kyle Flood has got essentially three weeks, two and a half weeks, three weeks to 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 continue to sell what they've been pushing as him being the number one on the big board, as him being the leader in that O-line room, and, and him being able to follow some big-time offensive tackles. Two years ago, it was Trevor Goosby, who's going to be wind up being an NFL draft pick. Last year, it was Brandon Baker, the five-star out of modern day, who's going to wind up being a draft pick. And so I think it might come down to how he gets on the field faster. Right. And if that's the case, I feel like Oklahoma would have the advantage. They, he would get earlier player playing time in Oklahoma. If you look at their line and the Texas line, it's, it's, it's pretty different from a depth standpoint. But 
Fasusi understands, hey, he could come in and – if he can compete with Goosby and, and Baker, he could play right away. And so just like Kelvin Banks coming in and starting as a freshman, they've told him that he could be something in a similar role. Whatever it is, it's a Texas OU battle. I think Fasusi goes back and forth a little bit every few days because I think he could envision himself playing at either school. Mm -hmm. Texas has done a great job. Oklahoma's done a great job. Man, Josh, this is going to be one that, that viewers are just going to have to continue to, to click on, on, on the YouTube channel and watch these shows because I think it's moving. There's moving parts here at all times. I like where Texas is at. I think I like where Oklahoma's at a little bit more. Let, let, let's, let's keep it posted for the next two or three weeks. Yeah, yeah. Visits are now completely done. Um, at, well, they will be on Tuesday, and then that's when the recruiting really begins. So there will be a couple more twists and turns to the Michael Fasusi saga as we kind of right. get closer to his commitment. Now, the five-star targets, we had five of them that are all going to be making their decision in <laughs> August, and I'm looking at it here. And, and just to recap how I think that you read it, uh, Jonah Williams, I think that you had – some confidence that Texas will land Jonah Williams. Jamie French, I think you had a lot of confidence. Cleek Lockett, I think you had a lot of confidence. M Michael Terry, I think you have a good bit of confidence. And Michael Fasusi, kind of a toss-up right now. So do you yeah. think uh, it's more likely – do you think it's more likely Texas lands two five-stars in August or four five-stars in August? Could you ask me three? <laughs> no. <laughs> can I can I split the difference? Sure. So you um, think there's a good chance that they land three five stars in the month of August? Yeah, I think they could split the difference. I, I think two are going to be in the boat. I think three is a strong possibility. Hey, if they can sweep it with four, that that's going to be even bigger. I, I still think Fasusi's a toss up. Look, Texas is, is in great position here. They are very close to his family. But I'm just telling you, Oklahoma is selling that early playing time, and Beaten Ball's done a great job. But I'd say three, maybe four, maybe four. I mean, three five stars in the month of August would certainly put Texas maybe maybe inside the top five, but maybe right outside the top five. Either way, they probably yes. jump about ten spots if they even land if they land three five stars. So it's going to be an exciting yeah. month. Texas fans, talk to us. Comment section below. How many five stars? Will Texas land in the month of August? Do you think it's one? Do you think it's five? Is it somewhere in the middle? Let us know. Comment section below. Well, you've made it to the end of today's video, but there's hundreds more videos on the On3 Recruits channel for you to check out. And also, while you're here, hit subscribe.